plaintiff, Desmond Johnson, is a female impersonator, and he says he and the defendant have been best friends for five years. Desmond claims the defendant is clingy and needs to know Desmond's whereabouts at all times. Desmond's suing because while the defendant was borrowing his car, the car caught fire and was destroyed. Defendant McKeltra Adams says Desmond is an impersonator indeed, but the problem is that you never know who you're going to get. McKeltra admits that she borrowed Desmond's car for two weeks, but she does not believe that she was negligent. Therefore, she refuses to pay. Start with you. I've known Miss Adams for about five years now. Um, I'm the godfather of her three beautiful children. Uh, the thing, you As know, in the person who protects them? Like a yeah. criminal type godfather? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Yanni, it really All the children on, usually have one. Yeah, one. It depends on how yeah, you look. Yeah, more the godfather is you know. the only one with several people. <laughs> That's the godfather you know, of a crime family. Now, <laughs> now mm -hmm. I call a Mac. You call. You can call a Kill. Nick, Nick, Pettiwack. We squirrels in your world. You know, God, whatever. I listen to it. <laughs> now you sound like a street guy. You know, <laughs> so, yeah, I was. I had it right. Go ahead. You know, me and McKilch were very close. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Baps, but you know they often refer to us as Nikki and Misi. Misi. Of, of course, I would be Holly Berry. You know, look at me. And she looks like a Mickey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, she only played, because... What is she, didn't she play that role, Queen? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Didn't she play yeah, Queen? Yes, sir, she did, yeah. All right. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So how long have you all been friends? We've been best friends for about five years. All right, now. and what has that friendship been like? It's been very rocky, Your Honor. You know, McKeltra, she's the type of friend, she's, she's very clingy. If I sneeze, I sneeze. Don't get mad now. <laughs> you know, she's that type of friend. You know, when I put on my get up, that's what I call it, my get up. You know, we go what out What get and, up is that? You know, the hair and the makeup and stuff. You oh, know. okay. You know, I do practice the art of female impersonation. So I wasn't far from the truth. Go ahead. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Mm -hmm. So if we go out, you know, me offer the buyers drinks. You know, them drinks be two for one. <laughs> And you know, sometimes you, if it's two for one, you just want the two for the one. You know, if they wanted That's you to right. share it, it'd be two That's for right. two. One for the way you're dressed today and one, one for the way you're dressed see, that night. I like you already, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, it, it gets so bad sometimes, Your Honor, I have to cut off the location on my phone because I'm scared she gonna come jumping out of bush. You know, I just can't keep off of me. Ma'am, you hey. give me some background. Your Honor, Desmond has been my friend, like he said, for five years, okay? But here's the thing, and yes, he is the godfather of my three beautiful children. Here's the thing. Desmond, yes, he is an impersonator. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's, Your Honor, this man impersonates any and everybody almost every minute of the day. You don't know whether you getting Seeley from the color purple. <laughs> To, uh, Wesley Snipes from Tu Wong Fu. <laughs> you may get Chucky the doll. Yeah. <laughs> Let me hear from you on the car that you're right. suing her about. How does she owe you for a car? All right, sir. February 4th of 2015, I let Miss Adams, I loaned her a car to get my godchildren back and forth. Two weeks after that, I get a call from the hysterical Mac. Um, oh, the car's on fire! Wait, hold up. Wait a minute. What you say? So she she repeats it again. Oh, the car's on fire! Okay. So, you know, I tell her, okay, I'm, I'll be on my way. Now, I stay about 15, 20 minutes from Miss mm -hmm. Adams, you know. So I get there. The fire department is already there. They've put the fire out, you know, bust my windows, you know, get my cars flooded. And they tell me that the, the fire did start from the engine. Me and Miss Adams. They told you that immediately? No, well, they had already been there. When so, did they tell you it started in the engine? After they had put it out. When, when I had got yeah, that my, same day. Yes, sir. They told me that then. It was apparent that it started from under the hood, the, the engine around that area. Did you follow up with any report from the fire department? No, sir, I did not. All right. But go ahead. The issue is her causing damage to it. I guess that's yeah. what you're suing her about, whether it was the engine or an electrical fire. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. So me and Ms. Adams agreed that day that she would pay me for the value of the car. 
Now, because I was not able to find the Kelly Blue Book value, I waited about a week and a half, you know, to really get my thoughts together because I love this girl. Uh, went back over, I said, well, hey, Mac, you know, I'm gonna, all you have to pay me, I paid 800 for, bought the car for 800. You know, I told her, as my friend, all you have to give me is 600 on she the new agreed? Car. Yes, sir. And hasn't paid you yet. Ma'am, let me hear from you. Yana, I, yeah, I, I used the car for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was in my possession. I used the car, go in the house, I come back out, the engine smoking. Okay, it was too you much. You left it running. No, sir. No, sir. I just came out. It was smoking and it was after smoking. you turned it off. I didn't even notice it, whether it was smoking under the hood. I didn't notice it. I just ran in my house real quick and I came right, right back when out. When you ran in the house, did you leave it running? No, sir. You turned it off. Mm hmm When you came out, it was on fire. Right, because I ran in the house for like 30 seconds. I know, but it was off. Mm hmm Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I called the fire department. Mm hmm After I called them, I eventually called him. Yeah. And I told him exactly what happened. And I did agree to pay him $600. But now I feel like I shouldn't. Why? Because there is no evidence stating that it was my fault that the car mm -hmm. went on so fire. So why'd you agree? Because I felt bad at first. Okay, and you feel good now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> you still feel bad? Do you still feel bad? No. You don't? Really? All right, how do you feel? I mean, it was an old car. I mean, I'm just being logical. It was an old car. You weren't being logical when you promised the 600? I technically didn't promise him that. What do you mean by technically? I you just said, told him that I would 600. give him. You said, I'll give you 600. What is untechnical about that? I didn't promise him. <laughs> All right, well, in the law, you did. In fact, what is considered is an offer to settle what would otherwise be a lawsuit based on your responsibility. You accepted the settlement offer of $600, yes, so I'm going to enforce that settlement. $600 for the plaintiff. Have a good day. I mean, I still love her, you know. I'm most certainly ready to make amends. There's no reason to let this hold us back. Uh, I feel like he sued me for $600. Evidently, he did not care about our friendship, so I'm dying. Well, I guess that we have it. <laughs>